Jim forwarded. The link was forwarded to me and I'm under Jim's name. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I, um, I'd like to call this meeting of the Land Use and Building Management Committee, uh, the Norwalk Common Council to order. It is 702. I am Tom Livingston, chair of the committee. With us tonight, uh, uh, we have Ms. Smith, Mr. Huberman, Mr. Burnett, and Ms. Alterman. And I think that is it. Okay. Um, First time on the agenda uh, is public participation. Do we have anybody sign up to speak? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. Um, we have uh, Diane Laricella. Diane, you are unmuted. Yes, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, thank you. Um, Name for the record, Diane Loricella. I just, uh, in reading the minutes, which I know are not verbatim, I wanted just to know whether uh, my questions uh, relating to the Ben Franklin School and the YMCA solar, pro uh, whether solar panels are should be part of the the uh, agreement with uh, the YMCA, whether those uh, questions were answered. I didn't see them reflected in the minutes. Um, I did not listen to the whole recording yet, uh, so uh, I would just love to, uh, it doesn't, and they don't have to be answered right during your meeting. Mr. Chairman, someone could reach out to me or email me with the answers. Thank you very much. I'll be muted. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Loricella. I, I will follow up and let you know. All right, is there anybody else signed up to speak? Uh, no, there is not. Has anybody, a member of the committee, uh, received any correspondence you'd like to read into the record or enter from the record? Seeing and hearing none, I'll now close public participation and move to the, first, the next item on the agenda, which is the approval of the minutes of June 1st, 2022. Do I have a motion? Mr. Hulman, thank you. Are there any corrections, addition, changes to these minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of the minutes as drafted? Opposed? Abstentions? One abstention, uh, we have four in favor. Mr. Burnett abstains. Okay, moving on to new business. The first item is to review bid results for the Roten Middle School asbestos abatement project. We refer the following to the council for action. One, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute an agreement with AAIS, a division of Spectrum Environmental LLC, state contract 103-0265-CV for the Roten Middle School asbestos flooring removal and replacement project for a total not to exceed $487,228, count noted. And two, authorize the NPS facilities department to change orders on contract for a total not to exceed $48,722, account noted. Do I have a motion? Ms. Smith, thank you. Uh, Bill, is this going to be you? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, as the uh, memo was written, uh, we went out to a uh, public bid and only went to state uh, contractors uh, together with the city's purchasing department. And uh, AAIS responded with a bid that was uh, below budget, and they are doing both tasks, and uh, that being removal of the asbestos and replacement of new tile. Uh, this project will be phased over two summers, as I mentioned in the past. They are doing half the job this summer. We are all prepped and ready for them to start once they get approval. And um, we do have a past history with them. They have uh, been involved with um, a hazmat remediation in a handful of schools, including um, uh, most recently um, Cranberry, Norwalk High and a few of the others. Uh, we worked with them before and we want to recommend them because we have they we know that they're good work ethics and they get the job done well. Thank you. How are you splitting up the job over the two summers? Well, there's a lot going on at Roten besides this. Uh, there's a lot of painting going on. There's a lot of um, uh, uh, light replacements and whatnot. In this case, uh, to do an abatement of the entire school, uh, it will cut too much into when the parents, uh, when the uh, teachers return. Last year, we did 
a smaller school, half the size, that was um, Silvermine. Uh, we were able to get that done in one summer. Here's a school twice the size. We must split it in half. I mean, are you doing like classrooms on one floor? Classrooms or hallways? I mean, again, is it floors? Yes, we're, we're doing the top level and the back end of the main level. Next summer, we're going to do the remaining portions of the main level and the lower level. All right, thank you. And one last question. Is this subject to reimbursement by the state? And if so- Oh, absolutely. Um, and that's why we- What, am, what amount? Case. So 32.5% uh, reimbursements or thereabouts. So not the 60%. Unfortunately, we missed that, yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Any questions, um, Mr. Huldman? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey, Bill, where does this leave us in the world of asbestos in our schools right now, percentage-wise, well, when this project's done? Well, we do have asbestos management plan. Um, we focus on what is most visible and what could be uh, potentially friable. That's why we focus on the floors. So what do we have left after this? Our asbestos management plan highly recommends Wolf Pit Elementary School after this. However, Wolf Pit Elementary School has the ceilings included in that. So it's hard to do work at Wolf Pit, running cable, running extra pipe, because now you have to abate the ceiling in addition to the flooring. Um, aside from that, we have um, smaller areas in other schools. Marvin is another one. But I, we've had this asbestos management program in place for about three years now, maybe four. Um, we've certainly um, have removed a lot of it. Percentage wise, where are we at? Do you have any idea what that would be um, I would, on, that, on that plan? It's hard to gauge that. I'm going to guess maybe we have 25% more left um, in the remaining portions of the district. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Okay, it is unanimous. All right, thank you. Thank you. Right, moving on, item B, review bid results for bathroom renovations at Roosevelt Center and refer the following to the council for action. One, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute an agreement with Retech LLC for Roosevelt Senior Center ADA toilet room renovations for a total not to exceed $79,900, account noted. And two, authorize the Office of Building Management to issue change orders on contract for a total not to exceed $7,990. Do you have a motion? Mr. Burnett, thank you. Uh, Alan. That's me, yeah. Um, Rosa Center, Senior Center uses a portion of the building and those bathrooms have been rendered since 1990s. And since then, we also up, did another upgrade recently because the senior uses it. Uh, the bathroom we're referring to is actually is the uh, 1970s portion of the building. So the original in the 1970s and there's two, uh, two multi-purpose room and the gym there. Um, so it's also an area that the senior uses all day long. So we are taking this opportunity, we're using capital budget money, ADA money, uh, it's not building management money, uh, to actually rent these bath bathroom for ADA compliance and, all, and generally speaking, upgrade the whole uh, the bathroom to meet uh, today's standards. Um, somewhat straightforward, it's a part of our plan to continue to upgrade this building. Thank you. Any questions? Hearing none, call for a vote. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, thank you. All right, Jim, school construction projects update. All right, I'm going to have uh, Mike and Dan um, report on their respective projects. Uh, Mike, are you able to? Very good. Thank you. All right, um, I think mine are the first ones in the presentation. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the first one the project is the uh, the Jefferson School, and at this time, all the major construction work at the school has been completed, and we've received a conditional certificate of occupancy from the building department. And all the other local agencies have been through the building: the fire marshal's office, the health department, planning and zoning, DPW, and every and all the other agencies that required sign off. Um, the, the past two weeks, we've been. Uh, moving the teacher's belongings from the Ponus Lower School into the new renovated Jefferson School. Um, the Board of Education asked us to move up that move uh, slightly for them so that they could uh, begin cleaning the uh, Ponus Lower School to make it ready for next year. 
And we've also had in the past two weeks, all of the furniture uh, has begun arriving. And we're about two weeks in with the largest delivery. Uh, two of the deliveries have already been completed and there's still two more companies uh, to still deliver furniture to the school. And we anticipate all the furniture to be in by uh, the middle of July, which is actually uh, two weeks from now. Uh, the picture to the left, for anyone that hasn't seen really the finished spaces, is the uh, the cafeteria cafetorium with the uh, the cafeteria floor and then the new uh, renovated stage and the stage lighting system. I'm sorry these photos are so small, but and then the photo to the right is the uh, learning commons or the new renovated library. And actually, these porthole windows, which some some of you may have seen, actually look down right into the cafeteria. Um, Do anyone have any questions on on the Jefferson project? We, we we should have stopped and look at that free balance there. I like that. Is it three million three hundred thousand left over? Uh, yes, sir. Um, but Mike, can I add something? I'm sorry. Um, so now that it's turned over to the Board of Ed. Um, I will be installing solar panels this summer. That is set to start on the 18th of this month and completion of that should be mid-September. So uh, yes, Jefferson School will have solar panels uh, uh, very soon. Uh, Bill, since you mentioned solar panels, how are we doing on PONUS? Is that done? Oh, I'm sorry, Alan. Yes, PONUS is 100% complete. That system is up and running. Oh, great. Thank you. Great. All right, um, and here's just a quick schedule. We're in the closeout phase uh, with the Jefferson project now. Uh, the next one is the uh, the Cranberry project, and uh, we're about um, a month month a month and one week into the project at this point, and uh, the site work is well underway. Uh, the photo that you see across the the slide here is uh, a photo taken from the southwest uh, portion of the site. Um, basically looking back at the, the active site for the new school and then the, the existing schools in the background. And uh, basically the uh, construction management firm and their contractors have brought the site down to grade and have been placing structural fill for underneath the foundations at this time. Uh, you know, the first summer is critical for this project is we're doing all the utility relocations and shutdowns to bring in, you know, the new water line that'll serve the new building as well as the existing building. Uh, currently, the, pro the power lines run into the site from Grumman Avenue, and those lines basically will be in conflict with the steel erection for the project. So all of those lines need to come down this summer in order for the existing school to have power as well as temporary power to facilitate the construction. And uh, the data and phone lines has also been, uh, um, will, will be relocated. And, with all the utility shutdowns, the, the, the data and telephones has already been completed. The power shutdown will begin next week and it'll take two days where the building will be without power. And then two, the day after the two day power shutdown is completed, the water shutdown will begin, as, begin right after. And uh, right now we have everything scheduled to be complete by uh, early August for all of the utility shutdowns. And then all, all of the utilities will be restored to the existing building and ready for the, for the next school year. And right now, the uh, concrete contractor has mobilized the site and begun fabricating formwork for all the new building foundations. Um, did anyone have any questions regarding? Uh, Mr. Burnett. Yes, thank you. Um, is it possible in the report to include an additional column that would show um, estimated reimbursement? Yeah, I don't, I don't because, see why not. Right, just so that we can get an idea. For example, Cranberry was showing the budget 45 million, but it would be helpful to know how much of that 45 million um, we anticipate or estimate will be reimbursable. Um, because, for example, the um, opponent, opponent, I mean, the Jefferson was a different rate than um, Cranberry, so, or it, I don't know, maybe it wasn't, but to have it's, a... Um, it's different. 
it is different. So it, it would be helpful. It would just be another data point that I think would be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Yep. That's that's no problem. Since uh, Mike, uh, since the number doesn't change, maybe I just put it right after the budget because it's always the same, generally speaking. Okay. So it's not a number that varies. It's really a budget. So okay, we figure it out. Yeah. You do it now. No, no, I was just making notes or anything. Uh, just re just want to remind everybody this this uh, Cranberry School is, is scheduled to be finished somewhere next year. So it is again, it's it's a, it's a very very challenging project, and we are we are doing everything we can. Um, <clears throat> this whole supply chain issues, we are trying to get ahead of it. So everything is being ordered as soon as we can, um, and we are very uh, conscious of those issues. Uh, at the same time, there's still uh, um, some limitations. So anyway, uh, we we will keep everybody updated, but we are we are on on schedule to finish in time for the opening of uh, so the so uh, when when kids come back in summer of 2023, they will be going to the new building, and uh, we will have started the demolition existing building. That that is our plan. That is our schedule, and we're still holding that schedule right now. Greg, Alan, when does steel go up? That's a my question. Uh, I. It's this fall, I believe. All right, thanks. And Greg, I'm going to assume that you're going to want that column on all four projects because um, all four have different reimbursement rates. That would be appreciated. Thanks, Jim. Okay. And here's just the schedule for Cranberry. All right. Uh, roll into Norwalk High School. This is Dan Phillips from CSG. A uh, quick update on the project. The schematic design for option B was completed on June 17th. That was distributed to the team. Uh, at that point, the architects started their design development phase. Uh, with that, they uh, get into more detail and they begin to incorporate some of the feedback we received in May and June. We met with a number of different groups to receive their feedback. The construction manager has those drawings and is working on the schematic design estimate, and this will be completed during the month of July. Also, the project team is scheduled to meet with the state on July 20th for a schematic design review meeting, where we get into the early details with them and begin to review uh, the project. And you may notice uh, some of the, uh, the Current budget was updated from 225 million to 239 million this month. We recently received, uh, since the last meeting, uh, approval from the state for the full amount of 239 million. And also in the last meeting, we talked a bit about reaching out to the security officers at the building uh, at the current Norwalk High School. We got in touch with them, received some feedback and relayed that to the design team. And we'll continue to be in touch with them as we move forward with the design. Just a point of clarification, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is that the total authorized 239, but we are hoping to come in around 225, is that correct? Yes, that's why we showed 225 at the last meeting. 225 is what we're planning to build to, 239 is what's approved. Okay, thank you. And, and we breezed over the construction schedule, but Norwalk High School runs into 2028. Uh, we'll get into more detail as we get into construction. Uh, South and, uh, North. I, I, so I just, uh, Dan, sorry about this, sorry to interrupt you. Yep. Uh, there's many, many, many conversations continue to happen with different division of uh, Board of Education uh, administration as well as uh, the school uh, leadership kind of thing at the, at the location. So there's many conversation about, you know, where to put what, what they need and how big the room, the, the size of the room really doesn't change at this point, but any minor adjustments here and there. And, you know, so there's, again, there's ongoing discussion every week with different, different representatives of different programs. <sighs> Okay, sorry, Dan. Okay, there's no other questions. We'll give an update on South Norwalk Elementary School. Uh, 
And the last update, we talked about preparing for that grant application for the school that was submitted a few days or about a week before that June 30th deadline. So that is in, we're waiting for feedback from the state. The purchase of the property at One Meadow Street Extension, the city does have a fully executed purchase agreement for the sale of the property. And the, the last update here is we have- uh, we, are, we are, I'm sorry, we are scheduled to uh, do the closing plus at, uh, I think July 20th or 22nd or so. Okay. Is that it? You there, Dan? We may have lost them. Um, right now, uh, Dan uh, actually has completed the architect's R, uh, RFQ, uh, RFP uh, for design services, uh, which should be issued probably late next week after it goes through uh, the purchasing department. And then uh, a couple of weeks after that, we'll be issuing the construction management RFQ, RFP um, for uh, public response as well. So we'll have a busy summer uh, soliciting architect and CM uh, services, uh, as well as uh, conducting interviews. Uh, okay, thank you. Any questions for Jim and his team? Okay, thank you. Boy, Alan, uh, you know, we could have a record tonight. Anybody else, <laughs> anything else in people's minds? Yeah, uh, you always ask me anything else. I just want to let everyone know that um, there's been a it's kind of like a ongoing conversation for for probably a year with Board of Education uh, uh, Superintendent about the desire the city should look look at a 25 year plan in terms of education facility improvements. So we do have occasion conversation about the strategy and plan. And I think this, this is something that the state of Connecticut it's. Uh, Desire of the city to do something like that, so that they can just, they can see what's coming ahead. Um, uh, I think with the sixty percent reimbursement, I think it gives the city a little more opportunity to to move some uh, to look at these projects more realistically than before. When you only get into twenty two percent, it's like it's affordability becomes an issue. But with sixty percent, it gives us a greater uh, possibility of, of looking at these projects and, and and looking instead of like far far in the future. But we could be like four, three years from now, we can start thinking about potential what next school is going to renov uh, renovate or, or build new school. So I just want to let everybody know that we are having those conversations. And I think that may be, uh, we may be bringing something back to the committee next month uh, because we may need to hire um, an architect to look at some, some specific site to see what the, what the flexibilities are. So again, these conversations continue to happen. I just want everybody to know that we, there, there's this, this discussion behind the scene uh, uh, about the future of school education, the facilities, not education, the facility improvements. Gotcha. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? All right, then I will consider this a record and call for a motion. Any motion to, motion to adjourn. Smith. All in favor? Okay, a record. Thank you all. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you, Alan. Good night. Good night.